Are you looking to get your first cloud architect job, your first solution architect job, your first cloud engineer job, and you have no experience? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers. And we're an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high performance, elite cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology now for over 25 years, and I've spent over two decades either helping people get their first tech job or get promoted in tech, and I want to help you get cloud hired or cloud promoted. Today, we're going to talk about cloud architect competency versus cloud architect experience, and that could be solution architect competency versus solution architect experience. It could be cloud engineer competency versus cloud engineer experience. And when it comes to getting hired, especially getting that first cloud architect job or solution architect job or cloud engineer job, it's your competency that matters. In fact, throughout your career, it's your competency that matters, not your experience. But we're gonna talk about what these two mean, how to leverage competency in your career and how to leverage experience in your career, because no matter what, they're both beneficial. The key is how to maximize what and leverage what you have to show the hiring managers that they need to hire you. I'm gonna begin with this. Hiring managers demand competency, which is good news for you. Human resources looks for experience, which is not good for you, which means if it's your first cloud architect job, first solution architect job, first cloud engineer job, and we're gonna tell you how to circumnavigate that so you can get cloud hired. But you have to understand why these goals are different. Let's first talk about what is competency versus experience. Cloud architect competence, so solution architect competency is the ability to do the solution architect job or the cloud architect job. Competency means the ability to do the job. Experience says you've been doing the job for a while. The problem is experience does not mean you've been doing it right. It doesn't mean you don't have bad habits. And there's many people, many people with lots of experience that are completely incompetent. I know many of you have seen someone do this. You walk into a store or you walk into a business. The person that's supposed to be helping you is a train wreck. They can't help you in any way. And someone you're with says, is this your first day here working? And the person says, no, I've been here for 20 years. That person is incompetent. And the reason that people are asking, is it your first day, is because the person can't do their job. So if we know that competency is what hiring managers want, why does HR like experience? Well, and why do hiring managers demand competency? Well, there's a problem. And let's talk about the mismatch between HR and hiring managers. Human resources are highly educated professionals. They're experts at determining what to pay people, what kind of benefits, what kind of people fit into the organizational culture. They're experts at that, that's their job. Hiring managers have a task to make sure that their team delivers whatever's necessary. Hiring managers need competency. So this is really the critical piece. HR cannot determine your competency. Human resources can't determine anyone's competency, and here's why. Human resources are not technology professionals, which means they can't interview you to see if you're good. They can't, because it's not their capability, it's not their job. The human resources job is different than the hiring manager's job, which is different than the solution architect's job or cloud architect's job. And that's where this mismatch comes in. So human resources can't determine your competency. So human resources puts down things like 30 Olympic gold medals, 15 years experience, experience in this domain, in this domain, in this domain. And that way, they figure whoever bypasses that screening process must be good. Now, the second reason that HR does this, or human resources does this, is the following. They get about 5,000 applications for a single position. So take a company like Amazon, who last year had, a, had over 25,000 positions open. Imagine getting 5,000 applications for 25,000 positions. It'd be an impossible task. So HR tries to keep people from applying, for, except for the people that it perceives as experience, which HR perceives as competent. Now, the hiring managers want someone that could actually do this job, not somebody else's job. And here's typically what happens in the hiring manager flow. Human resources sends us people that have beautiful resumes. By the resumes we see, we feel like these people should be interviewing us and hiring us, not the other way around. And then we interview the client, and what we hear is incompetent, 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 incompetent. And the reason these people that HR sends us are often incompetent is the following. HR does not know what to look for. So they look for all this varied experience and varied careers. And in the end, we get a jack of all trades, master or none, and someone that's entirely incompetent on all of our jobs. So this is where your seeker comes in as a brand new person without experience. We hiring managers demand people that are competent. 
So what we typically do is we typically call a recruiter we hire managers. We call the recruiter and say, I need a cloud architect that is an expert with end-to-end -end system design. Really good, strong knowledge of the network, strong knowledge of the data center. I need someone with high level of emotional intelligence, a high level of executive presence, a high level of CXO relevancy. Excellent presentation skills, excellent business acumen. And then what will happen is the recruiter will call us back. And the recruiter will tell us, I've got these three people for you. This person has this set of attributes, this person has this set of attributes, and this person has this set of attributes. And then we hiring managers actually then go interview the client, and if the person's good, we make them an offer. We then tell them to fill out actually uh, an application to the organization and tell HR we've already hired the person to fill out the paperwork. And that's how many hiring managers actually bypass the, H, the human resources process. I know I've done it, and I can tell you I've only interviewed with five companies and I've been hired by all five, and three out of five have been this way, going through the recruiter. And by doing this, you can show the hiring manager that you are an expert at your job instead of being knocked out by human resources for lack of experience. Now, don't think I don't love experience, because I love experience. Life is cumulative, and anything that we've learned in our life can make us better. I don't really care what your career is. And the secret to success when getting that first cloud architect job, or that first solution architect job, or that first cloud engineer job, is also one of it is to show the hiring manager that you have experience, even if it's somewhere else. In my first architect job, I had no experience. I showed the hiring manager that my background in internal medicine was exactly the same job as a network architect. And the hiring manager just said, explain this to me. And I said, well, in internal medicine, someone comes to my office with a problem, right? And the guy says, yeah. I said, when you go to the doctor, we ask you a bunch of questions, right? And the hiring manager said, yes. I said, the doctor makes a diagnosis, right? And the hiring manager said, yes. And then he gives you a plan, which usually a prescription, and the hiring manager says, yes. I said, so as an architect, network architect, I'm going to ask the client about their business, right? And he says, yes, absolutely. I said, from there, I'm going to maybe do an examination of their system by bringing in some engineers to base on the systems. And the hiring manager said, yes. I said, I'm going to make a diagnosis. And the hiring manager said, yes. And then I said, I'm going to build a plan called an architect, right? And he said, yes. So I said, I want to get this straight. So in this case, the doctor's interviewing the patient, the architect's interviewing the client. Over here, the next thing we do is the doctor asks some questions and baselines the systems, and the architect asks more questions and baselines the system. Doctor makes a diagnosis, architect makes a diagnosis, doctor makes a plan called a prescription, architect makes a plan called an architecture. Haven't I been doing this job all along? And the hiring manager smiled and he says, yes, never thought of that way. That's a great way to put it. I also love your communication skills. I guess that came out of medicine as well. So the key is, is we, life is cumulative and whatever experience you have is great. Now, if you have a tech background, that's great too. Position that tech experience as a means to get better. But the key is hiring managers always need competency, not experience. So how do you do this? How do you bypass HR? Well, I told you how the recruiters are the way directly to the hiring manager. So how do you make the recruiters come to you? You've got to build your brand. So you build the perfect LinkedIn profile, the perfect resume, a resume that tells the employers what you can do for them, not what you're looking for. Make sure your resume screams competency. Make sure your resume shows some kind of excellent communication skills in your resume. Make it easy to read. Same thing with your LinkedIn profile. Have the world come to you. You can see lots of examples on our YouTube channel of people like Delroy Batt, who recently got his first cloud security architect job through us with no experience. And he talked about how the recruiters came to him, how he did not need to apply for jobs. I could tell you the story every day with my students. So the key is you want to attract recruiters and you want to attract hiring managers to come to you. Because when you're with that hiring manager and they ask you some questions, they will know instantly, are you competent or are you not competent? And if you're competent, you're getting cloud hired. And you're going to love your career. And when you're looking for a promotion, make sure that you're competent and you can get your message across to the hiring manager. So which matters more? Cloud architect competency or cloud architect experience? Cloud architect competency, solution architect competency, cloud engineer competency, and all in all, competency is the winner for your career. So get competent, be the best you can be, learn your skills, your job, not anybody else's job, and have a brilliant, brilliant career. Now, if you're looking for your first cloud architect job, we have a cloud architect career development program that will teach you everything you need to know to get your first cloud architect job. Everything from the tech skills all the way to interviewing to your LinkedIn profile, even salary negotiation is in that program. Now, if you're looking for your first cloud engineer job, guess what? We've got a cloud engineer career development program, and it's everything you need to get hired. From everything you need to learn to be a cloud architect, 
all the way with mastering that interview and even negotiating your salary. This is Michael Gibbs, and I look forward to seeing you in another video coming very soon. Take care.